Hello everyone. Seems to be live streaming at this point, so I'm going to try to kind of explain how we're going to take an item out of the Form 2 photopolymer resin printer um, and wash it and UV cure it so that you can use this as a reference video for when you actually print your own uh, various models. So what I currently have in here now is a batch of the gray pieces for our 3D puzzle and I thought that this would be a good opportunity to record what I'm doing because I need to get another batch in um, and then eventually I'll be asking all of you to, to help out with this process after viewing this video. So um, you're going to grab the bottom of the case or the cover right above the LCD screen. It's a little stiffer than you would imagine. You kind of lift it up. It's, it's not locked or anything so you don't have to worry about breaking it. Just be careful when you lift it. Um, the photopolymer prints are underneath on the build plate. Remember there's a tank of liquid and all of this is still wet so at this point what I would recommend you doing is put on some rubber gloves as there's some safety precautions with touching the resin. Um, so spend a couple seconds grabbing some gloves. We have them up here in the uh, cabinets and the supplies. In addition to that, safety glasses would also be required. You wouldn't want to get any of this in your eye. Put there for a minute. Put the gloves on. Okay, so at this point, um, I'm going to move the camera around, so I apologize. I don't have a gimbal that can kind of take out the, the movement of the camera, so I apologize for this, but I want you to see kind of what's happening. Um, actually, you can kind of see at this point. So over here on the, the actual printer head, there's a lock that you lift up that you can kind of see here. It just slides right out of almost like a dovetail, as you can see. And then here are the parts that have been printed. Um, they're wet and drippy as the, um, the photopolymer that has not been cured or hardened by the, uh, the laser light underneath is still obviously all over this. So what we need to do here is bring this over to our initial wash tank and mount our 3D prints on the handle that will allow us to remove these off of the build plate. So we just kind of slide this down onto, right, as you can see, this slides right on. Kind of just give it a little squeeze. I want to make sure it's on there. It doesn't lock with any specific mechanical lock. It's purely friction, so you kind of want to use your thumb here and, and push. I typically only use one of these tanks. We have the actual um, Form Labs wash and cure stations. This is just the initial. And so what I like to do is open this up. There's a little bit of a, a tray inside here, and then there's a back lip. This kind of hangs off the edge of the tank. What we're going to do is I'm going to grab a, a putty knife that's specific to this printer. I'm going to put it over here on the edge and kind of scrape the pieces off of the surface. They're going to fall into the tray and then I'm going to lower it down into the initial um, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. And then this is going to kind of dissolve any of the liquid based resin. Initially we are going to put it in a bigger tank for wash that's going to be automated and then we're going to cure it. Okay, so. I'm going to grab the uh, putty knife. Get this started. Oh no. At this point, fast forward the video to get to the point where I have the putty knife. Um, we worked on this yesterday and it seems to have walked away. <clears throat> Apologize for the delay if you're watching this live. I wouldn't imagine you would be. Bear with me. This was supposed to be here. hiding in plain sight. 
So this is um, just a standard putty knife basically, but the edges are, have kind of been dulled. It's not super sharp. I don't really want you to gouge the build plate because that's the surface of which the parts adhere to. And if we mess up the surface on the build plate, it could affect the way that our prints adhere to and then potentially cause failure. The nice part about this printer is that it actually doesn't fail. Um, I can count on the amount of time that I expend printing and actually get it um, a good return on this versus some of my other FDM printers. I could dedicate a couple hours to something and then find out that it's been um, a failed print. And so I have that time that's been lost. I've never had a failed print on this printer, which I, I love. So at this point, I'm going to try to get the camera to show you how this is how this is actually conducted. Maybe I'll come on the other side. So at this point, um, I'm just going to kind of hang this over the edge and try to hook my, my tray. And I'm just going to kind of keep this blade flat with the surface. I'm not going to hold it at an angle because I'll gouge it. And you just kind of, we'll, we'll leave it set. We're just going to kind of root, you know, repetitive hits with the actual putty knife. I'm not gouging the metal. And since this is actually on the, um, sacrificial support, what I'm really breaking here at this time is the parts of the model that I'm actually going to break off. So at this point, um, what I'm doing here, thank you very much. Uh, what I'm doing here is, actually um, just breaking off the, the parts on this and as you can see I'll scrape this off and clean it in a minute um, let's go do it right now so I'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure here with my finger um, kind of scrape this off I don't care that it goes into this tank this is something that is considered kind of like a waste wash and now this surface is clean as you can see let's get this over there's no hardened model geometry on this. And at this point, you know, having paper towels nearby is helpful. So you can kind of wipe up some of the mess as you go. Remember, you're wearing gloves because this stuff shouldn't be on bare skin or come to contact with your skin so you want to keep this surface clean and this area clean because this is a multi-purpose area and someone in a different class could come by and get this material on themselves and not know it so we want to avoid that from happening um at this point since this is the video that's going to demonstrate the entire process that i would like you to um perform i want to go through the details of just kind of washing this off so at this point you have your build plate I initially like to wipe off what is here, wet. Having a trash can nearby is helpful because you can throw this stuff directly in the trash can. So I kind of have the majority of the material off the build plate. And then I'm going to take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and pour a little bit on the surface. As you can see, um, it's fairly dry, right? Um, we're just going to put a little bit of isopropyl on the actual build plate itself. I almost like to kind of massage it into the surface. It's a matte surface. It's got some texture to it. Let's see if I can get a better angle while I'm doing this. All right. The surface tension is actually keeping it on the, the material here and it's not dripping off. So I'm just kind of massaging it into the side. And really what I'm doing is dissolving the uncured photopolymer. So at this point, grab another handful of paper towels and just wipe it off. As you can see, this handle is really helpful in terms of cleaning it as well.
and you can see that there's really not too many gouges there's some but nothing deep um, you know this is a sacrificial piece of material we can buy new ones they're a couple hundred dollars so I would like to do this infrequently so take care while doing this and if you ever need any help obviously just reach out so at this point this is pretty clean okay we're going to put this to the side. We'll put that in the printer in a little while. So what we currently have here, let's see if we can get this camera to look down into it. Our parts here, all right, and our parts themselves, They're kind of sloshing around in some isopropyl alcohol. I'm just kind of moving this up and down a couple times. We're just dissolving the uncured resin. And we're going to take these parts. Let's see if it can focus. Apologize for the lack of autofocus that this webcam seems to have. Um, but we're going to take these parts and we're going to put them in the actual auto wash. The auto wash is exactly what it sounds like. It automatically washes them. So let's let's point the camera over to the auto wash and give it a go. So what we have over here is the um, the Form Labs wash and UV cure stations here and here. This is the final step, and this is where the video is going to end. As you can see here, I have some parts in the actual UV. Cure. It's actually a lightsaber. One of my students here that drew it in um, or created it in on shape. Kind of an interesting part. Just, just a passion piece. And what we're curing here is the 3D puzzle pieces that you can see here. Um, there's your autofocus. And so think of a Tetris piece. So students were, if you aren't in this project and you're watching this outside of the context of the class. My students are designing a three-dimensional puzzle, so when printed, you have a two by two by two cube, and uh, anywhere from five to seven pieces. They'll 3D design it, export the STLs, um, and receive, you know, get their parts. Obviously, prior to that, they'll assemble it in 3D to make sure that the pieces are where they're supposed to be, and they know exactly what they're um, they're actually going to get as an output. So this is the final step. These parts are fully cured. They've been in the um, the cure here for 50 minutes at 40 degrees Celsius and it's just a simple dial that brings us up and down and enters the push button so we'll do this last um, this is going to take about 10 minutes over here on the wash so you won't see the end of the wash you'll see the beginning of it and then when this is done I take them out and then I shake them off lightly and I place the pieces on the tray I set the timer and the temperature I close this and I hit start and then when this is done the pieces will be cured fully right now they're at about 90% and so they're still soft and so that's why I didn't take off the supports because they don't actually come off um, nicely when they're not cured these snap off pretty easily when they're fully cured so let's do the final steps here I'm rounding about 13 minutes so hopefully I still have your attention so what we're going to do over here, let me see if I can pick the camera up and bring it over to the LCD. So you have the LCD, you just push it to turn it on. There we go, let's see if I can turn this on a stool. Come on, autofocus. It's struggling. Okay, so um, I like to, uh, t 10 minutes is typically all that's ne necessary, but at this point, if you want to do more, go up to the time and then turn your dial up or down. It's very bright for the camera to apparently record, but you can see the numbers down here below. So obviously, if that's 9, that's 11, 10 in the middle. I'm going to keep it at 10 minutes. I'm going to go over to open, press open. And you will see that this auto opens and inside here kind of looks like a fry later basket there's about a gallon of al alcohol in this tank 
that this is going to be lowered into and there's an agitator at the bottom that agitates the liquid in a clockwise then counterclockwise for 50% of the time and it washes the resin out. We have some fine details in the 3D models that we actually are extracting at this point and, and curing. So I'm just going to shake the, the alcohol off of the temporary tray. As you can see here, um, the fine detail that we actually have in some of these are basically extrude cuts of initials and names so I can identify these easily with my um, students because I have about 75 students that are doing this project. And so they cut their names into the parts at a 32nd of an inch, as you can see. Um, and they do come out. I don't know if I can get close and have it autofocus. Let's see. There you go. So it's wet and goopy, but that's a 32nd of an inch in terms of depth. Um, and if I didn't wash this thoroughly, the uncured photoresin would actually go inside the letters. And then when they're cured in the oven, the photopolymer then would fill up the actual letters and the letters themselves wouldn't render. They wouldn't come out. You wouldn't be able to resolve them. So we're just going to drop these in. Any loose fragments and things like that that you can take off before putting them into this wash would be ideal. Now these parts are going to rattle around a little bit inside here and that's, that's fine. It took me a little while to be okay with that. Um, but any loose pieces, try to avoid putting them in the actual basket that may have broken off. And some of them will, and that's totally fine. They're slippery. They feel kind of like a wet bar of soap, so be careful not to drop them. And if you take a look, you can see the pieces that did come off. We're just going to tap that into the garbage can and throw it, all that away. So at this point, with a clean hand, probably a knuckle, roll this up, push start. And you'll see that it auto submerses, see it here into the liquid. The timer will have started. And I doubt you can see the agitation happening. Um, I'm going to open up the lid just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. As you can see here, and then it's going to go in the other direction. There's a little um, propeller at the bottom that just moves the, the fluid so that it washes all the resin that hasn't been cured completely away. Right. So at this point, this is the end of the video. Hopefully this is helpful in terms of getting you started in the lab in terms of how you should be doing um, the various operations and things like that. Obviously, there's still a cleanup process, so I need to make sure that everyone that does this actually takes care and make sure that this environment stays clean and it's back to the way it was when you started. So what you're not going to see me do on camera um, at this point is throw the paper towels away, put the alcohol back into the cabinet. Um, and actually, there's one final thing you actually can't see me do. What we should always do is kind of prepare for the next print. And so we, we cleaned off that build plate. So that build plate is, is dry and clean and almost as good as the day it was when we bought it brand new so you just pull these apart you're going to come over to the printer that you saw in the beginning of the video you're going to slide this down over the top of the dovetail do not drop it onto the tank it's never happened before um, so just be careful and then you just push this lever down it locks close the cover this environment in the lab could have dust in it i don't want dust settling into the, the photo resin and that resin can stay there for a month or two without any problems. There's no sunlight coming through the window. This is far away into the lab from windows. And so at this point, I've had photopolymer sitting in a tank over summer and never had any issues. So at this point, this is reversing itself. It'll finish in about seven minutes. This is ready to print again. I'm going to go throw away the paper towels and put all my materials away the way it was when I first started and uh, throw my rubber gloves away. Okay, so hopefully this was informative and helpful moving forward.